addressing the um, chemical dependency evaluation. Uh, you said that you've been, in your general experience, you've been doing this for about 18 years now. Yes. Uh, based on your uh, experience, uh, is Mr. Paul amenable to treatment of any sort? No. Marijuana use? I'm not an expert in that field, but I don't believe he is. Uh, and uh, if an evaluation came back that said, uh, due to his um, uh, lack of amenability to treatment, there would be, in fact, no treatment uh, offered. Is that fair? It's possible, given his, his position on the use of controlled substances. Uh, there are a number of, of rules of probation, uh, many of which Mr. Paul complies with. Yes. Uh, he, he reports when uh, instructed. Correct. Uh, he uh, has uh, sought your permission for changing his residence, employment, or traveling out of state. Yes. Uh, he, there have been no arrests um, or questioning by law enforcement that he's never talked about, or have there been questioning instances? Not that it was substantial. Nothing that would have risen to a violation. I, I mean, I, I will agree that short of the ones that were alleged in the violation, he had been compliant with the other terms of his probation. All the other ones he followed? Them. Yes, that I'm aware of this. Is it, uh, in, in fact, the, the violation is the uh, center around uh, Mr. Paul's uh, political view regarding the legalization of marijuana? The substance side of it, yes. Uh, he has described for you that, that he takes the, um, he consumes marijuana for medicinal purposes. Yes, that's what he tells me. Uh, and, and in fact, the laws of New Hampshire actually uh, permit medical marijuana. I believe that they do, but I don't believe he has a prescription for the use of marijuana. If this, I'm not overly familiar with the medical side of it. Uh, to your knowledge, was anybody arrested for the incident that was shown in the video? Nobody was arrested that I know of. Uh, you said that you had an anonymous tip. Have you since learned who that anonymous tip no, was? No, it was a voicemail, so it didn't leave a return number or anything. It was just a voice on the, on, on the voicemail. When the gentleman who appears to have a bucket in his hand, the, the 
before the altercation. The gentleman's carrying a bucket. And um, isn't it true that one of the things Mr. Paul says, do you, do you recognize his voice to say, don't you want to stay and kick our asses? That was Mr. Paul, right? There, there are comments made to that gentleman that are Mr. Paul, but I don't know them word for word. So, but, but in re listening, if I listen to it again, again, I, I recognize his voice making comments to that gentleman specifically. Yes. Permission to play again to see whether the witness identifies that as Mr. Paul in those words. Are we? Are we? At, are you at that point that you want him to? Are you going to listen to the whole whole thing, or or just that? Portion? Just that portion. I just want to. See if he recognizes the person who says, don't you want to stay and kick our asses? Where's your grand? I should add, Attorney Hill, if, if this is video of, of that same incident, you don't need to have, uh, I'll, I'll allow the defense to present it without, without a witness. If, if Your Honor, I think that uh, Mr. Uh, Ian was there, and I think that he can provide the court. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, I, that's, certainly that, that's appropriate. And, and just so the court understands what I've got here, I've got a, a video of the same section of the video the first three minutes that's been slowed down to about one-third speed and it provides a, a much clearer view of what does or doesn't happen there. Um, if, uh, I don't know if it, it's going to load this machine or not. Probably not. Are we just a wall, Mr. Webbs? Hey, you are. Your Honor, if I could go ahead and call Mr. Ian, I, I think yeah, I we can proceed and, 
and uh, I perhaps I've not yet. Okay. I can play the video on my laptop as well if need be. So. Okay. Um, with the permission? Absolutely. Sure. Yes.
he was continuing to say things as well. He was yelling, get a job.
I'm sorry, you said that you could tell that the hammer was rolling because the, the screen was on? Yes, it has a shut off feature where um, if, it's, if you don't do anything with about 30 seconds, the name of the camera was a Canon Vixia HFR 21. And it had a shut off feature if, if you uh, close the screen open while you're recording and it'll re remain recording. So what the fact is that you um, I found out that it was smashed, presumably in the video, um, this, someone pointed out to me. Let me ask you a different question. Did someone pick it up? Yes. Uh, is that Terry? Yes, Terry picks up the camera. Okay, and as you listen to this, uh, uh, the audio that goes along with this portion of the video, can you hear a, a, a crunching sound as Mr. Terry is right there? Yes, you can. Yeah. picking something up. In fact, I think in a moment you see him throw something, or maybe he's already thrown it, he's picking it up to pieces right now. And, and do you understand, if, or do you know whether or not that was your camera? Yes, that, that was my camera. Uh, okay. Uh, you, you can stop the video now. Uh, it, as you uh, were present uh, there, did you see uh, Mr. Paul uh, 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 act violently towards anyone? No. In fact, I would say that, as you see in the video, when people are approaching, he is actually moving away. Uh, d does he uh, move to strike anyone? No. Uh, does he... Uh, uh, do anything other than try to stop a violent attack? No. Um, you heard 
heard the statement, we could definitely use some backup as much as you can muster. That was rich too, wasn't it? I believe so. That was several minutes after the incident occurred. He was on the phone with somebody trying to get people to come down, is that right? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. So Rich had called someone. Who did he call? I'm not sure. It, it might have been Ian Freeman. And he was trying to get him to send more people down as much as you can muster, right? Yes, the idea was that more people would make for a safer square. You were inside his head? You know what the idea was? Well, I think we all had a collective understanding uh, that, that there was an issue with there's violence occurring, that there needs to be more peaceful people, and I'd say specifically cameras around. All right. Um, the defendant was holding something in his right hand as we went through that video. And it wasn't styrofoam, it wasn't flowers, it was a stick, wasn't it? Well, I suppose stick would be a, a rudimentary way of defining it. I believe it was a monopod. A monopod. Perfect. Excellent. For him? Yes, that's what a monopod is for. Alright, and if he were to strike someone with it, it very well could injure him. Yes? Striking someone with any object could cause injury, sure. Particularly a monopod, which is a, a solid object, right? It is solid. <coughs> you said um, about that couple that was standing right near the incident, well, they seemed somewhat worried. Sure. Because they did, in fact, seem somewhat worried, right? I'd imagine anyone witnessing that would be somewhat troubled by it. Okay. The, uh, the, the couple that I, I uh, pointed out in pink and yellow, uh, was there a change in their your apparent view of the situation when it became violent? I wouldn't really, I wasn't paying attention to them to be honest, but it's, I don't know if they were any, in any way engaged or anything more than just observant. I mean, they, they walked through the square even as, as uh, uh, there was the, the yellow. 